Let's take a quick look at how this would function. So here we have a server, we have two different clients, and we have one in transparent mode. And what's going to happen here, we add a VLAN on the server. As soon as we add that VLAN, advertisement goes out. So say we were at rev 46 or revision number 46. When we added the VLAN, the revision number gets increased. We send out an update for revision 47 with the new database. When the transparent bridge gets it, he doesn't really care because he's a transparent mode bridge. That's not going to change his VLAN database at all. He just propagates it down through. The client, though, says, okay, Rev47 is higher than Rev46, so go ahead and make the changes to my database. Same thing happens down on this switch here. And then the two clients actually will end up sending updates to each other. Those updates won't do anything because by that point they've both already updated to Rev47. So you're essentially advertising the same revision number at that point. So that's basically how VTP version 1 and 2 operate. We'll take a quick look at some configuration. These are all the main commands you need to know. So first you want to set the VTP domain on all your switches. We can protect things with a VTP password. So every switch would need to have the same VTP password in order to participate. We set our mode. By default we're in server mode. So VTP mode server or client or transparent. We can set our version number. We can set uh, the interface we're going to see. When we look at the status of VTP, we can tell it, okay, what interface or what IP address is going to be associated with this VTP instance. Here we're saying loopback zero. Show VTP status is really the main thing to know. And show VTP password would actually show you what password you set. Even though um, you may not see it in the config, if you forget what the password is, you can do a show VTP password. Now VTP pruning, I'm going to go back to that here. VTP pruning is something that allows us to automatically prune VLANs off of trunks that are not used. Okay, so if we enable VTP pruning and... VTP recognizes that, let's say you've got uh, VLAN 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50 between switch 1 and switch 2. And by default, all those VLANs get passed over the trunk between switch 1 and switch 2. VTP pruning, if it detects that, hey, over on switch 2, there's no interfaces that are assigned to, say, VLAN 50, then it will dynamically go ahead and pull VLAN 50 off of the trunk. The reason it would do that is it makes things more efficient. There's no reason to trunk VLAN 50 over to the second switch if it's not being used, because it's really just a waste of bandwidth at that point. So that's VTP pruning. Those are the basics. So let's do a quick test here. I'm going to pull up the rack of equipment. And we can see right now if I do a show VTP status here in a second, I can see that right now we're running VTP version 1. I'm running in transparent mode. I haven't even set a domain name. I'm not doing pruning. I haven't enabled version 2. This stuff here has to do with the password. So that's the digest, the MD5 hash, if I were to set a password. So what we're going to do is first, I'm going to say VTP mode server, and I'm going to say VTP domain CCIE, and I'm going to set the domain name on all the other switches as well. So on two, I'm going to say VTP domain CCIE, VTP mode client. We're going to make three a client as well. So VTP domain CCIE, VTP mode client, and four we're going to make transparent, which I think it already is, show VTP status. We're already transparent, so let's just say VTP domain CCIE. 
Might as well go ahead and set a password as well. You know what, before I do that, this is a good troubleshooting tip. You can see here, when I was in the midst of changing things, it said DTP, or Dynamic Trunking Protocol, Domain Mismatch, unable to perform trunk negotiation on port 19 because of a VTP domain mismatch. It's a very good message to know about. So if your VTP domain names do not match, then DTP is unable to negotiate a trunk. So you want to make sure that things match. Show interface trunk real, real quick here. We can see now it's fine because we went ahead and changed the domain name to match. So now we're okay. Now let's see here, where were we? We went to server mode and we were going to set a password. So let's say VTP password Joe24347. I'm going to copy and paste that. Okay, so again, cat one's the server, cat two and three are clients, cat four is transparent. So what we're going to do now is let's do a show VLAN brief. We can see right now we don't have any VLAN called 110 yet, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a VLAN called 110 and make sure it propagates around to our other switches. Before I do that, let's just check these guys. So show VLAN brief. Show VTP status. We can see now he is a client. The revision is zero. Show VTP status here. Client, domain CCIE. Revision is zero, so that looks all right. And on four, we're transparent mode, the domain matches. So let's see what happens here. Cat one, I'm going to say VLAN 110, and I'm going to say name. Uh, let's just say it's one hundred dash ten. Exit out of that, and we'll see if this propagates over. Since we're the server, it should send it over to Cat2. Do a show VTP status. We can see the config revision number increased to 1. Show VLAN brief. And now magically, this VLAN is here. Let's check Cat3. Do show VTP status. Again, our revision number increased. Show VLAN brief. We do see the new VLAN. Fantastic. On CAT4, we shouldn't see anything. So because we're transparent mode, we don't see it increase. We should not see VLAN 110 because that is operating independently from everybody else.